We are back again, guys. Footy Gods, Defender, Super Coach, Player Preview. Looking at Hunter Clark in this video. Really interesting player, this one. Uh, all the potential in the world. Uh, but as we know, over the last couple of years, has had a terrible run with injuries. I mean, the good news is uh, here the injuries he has sustained haven't been really, um, you know, like uh, soft tissue, uh, these sorts of things. He's been, uh, you know, that's when he got smashed by, uh, who was it? I can't think who it was that smashed him in Adelaide, against Adelaide. Um, but they took him out really good uh, and then he missed, you know, the next five or six games and obviously he wasn't right uh, for the remainder of the year, 2021. It'll come to me who smashed him, but they got him really good. And in 2022... Uh, yeah, clearly struggled with injury again, start of the year, but then came in and same thing happened again. He got smashed uh, by his own teammate in a pretty horrific collision in round 16 and then uh, missed a bunch of games and then obviously wasn't right again. So unlucky, really unlucky so far, Hunter Clark, but I really like him as a pick. So let's look at our formula and We'll go through and see if he's a good inclusion or not. Uh, scoring pedigree. So interesting, as a junior, in his draft year, 117 points per game. He was getting 26.5 touches a game, almost a goal a game as well, 6.5 tackles a game. Really good numbers, really good numbers. So he was actually touted as, a, as an inside midfielder. He was playing as a midfielder. So can he uh, break out this year and have a good run with injury? and meet his potential we'll see so there is some pedigree there junior pedigree and in 2020 we can see if we go through his 2020 uh year not too bad you know a couple of hundred plus scores 124 uh obviously an injury affected game here because he missed the next game so if we take that out he's aver actually averaging up so 85 so not too bad uh scoring potential so we've seen his junior year, 117. So there's some potential there. And if we look at his scores when he did play the full year, yeah, so he's got got a bit of a ceiling. He can go 120, um, obviously yet to be seen consistently with his run with injury. But there is, you know, there is signs. He's showing signs, definitely. Consistency, let's have a look at his consistency. So pretty solid. Uh, pretty consistent so when he doesn't score that great you know it's sort of 70s 80s sure there's some 60s and, and a couple of 50s in there but overall pretty consistent so that's a tick is he trending upwards well he was he was trending upwards nicely so in his third year of league footy missed just the one game and averaged 82 with an injury affected 30 odd in there so he was trending really nicely and then, like we said, really bad run, uh, really unlucky run with injuries has stopped that trend uh, in its tracks. But uh, again, showed signs before injury. Okay, no VC, that's fine. Job security, yep, he's a, he's a lock in that team, uh, you'd think. Uh, so yeah, this is the big one, injuries. But like we touched on, it's not actually... Ongoing niggles, you know, this is, it's unlucky. He's been unlucky with his injuries. So, you know, the, the, the positive is it's not ongoing niggles. No soft tissue, generally. So it's about, you know, can he get a good run of it? And can he get a bit of luck on his side? And avoid injury for the year. Uh, so his role is another big one as well. Where's he going to play? That's the question. You know... We saw Jack Sinclair emerge as that halfback flanker last last year. So where does he fit inside that back six? Does he push into the midfield if he's uh, up and flying? So big question marks there. We have to monitor monitor the role there. But if if it's if it's juicy, if he's at half back pushing up, then big pluses. Big pluses. 
So yeah, that's a you know, question mark. How does Ross Lyon want to use him? We have to see how the coach wants to use him. Price. Well, this is the positive about Hunter Clark. Big value here. So he's priced at 57. And we know that he can deliver 80, 85s uh, if he's up and flying uh, with, with a bit more upside as well. So it's potentially 30... 30 plus points on offer there. So huge value. Won't be a keeper in our sides. Uh, he's, you know, he's going to be a stepping stone sort of guy, but he, he, you know, he can do a job. If he's, if he's going well, he can do a job for the majority of the season. Should fit into our team structure pretty nicely at just over 300 Ks. He's a really great price. So that's a tick. We can, we can sit him at uh, D4. And he'll fit in there nicely. Uh, yeah, it is a it is a risky pick. Uh, I don't. Yeah, the risk probably does outweigh the reward, um, just in terms of the unknown of his role and injury issues. But the reward is there. Like we said, thirty points of value. There is some reward to the pick. Not many coaches have him. And there's, I mean, the risk is negated by the price. He's pretty cheap. So maybe maybe there's not so much risk reward. It's negated, negated by price. So his strength, so really good uh, user, uh, clean under his, uh, below his knees. So he likes to find his own ball, finds the pill, athletic. Probably, yeah, he might be a bit slight maybe, that's his probably weakness. He's been knocked around a bit. So maybe he needs to add a bit of muscle uh, to his frame and not get knocked out every time he runs into a, a contest. Uh, home games, let's have a look at the, the Saints fixture. So Frio, Bulldogs, Essendon, Gold Coast, Collingwood, Carlton, Port, North, and Adelaide GWS. Pretty good run. Really good run. Uh, there's only probably one or two three teams in there that are really going to probably cause concerns three or four out of ten so that's a big tick for me he's got a, a pretty good run at it tick not going to get tagged that's fine uh so we spoke about his strength and weaknesses here i don't know why that's there put that down there that's fine owner history have you be, have you been burnt you might have you might have backed him in after his breakout season in 2020 well his his natural progression season in 2020 and then he sort of burnt you in 2021 so you can definitely understand the owners would be a bit sheepish after that uh after his injury issues so ownership i reckon he's around he's very low owned let's have a look six loads should be in the two percent i think three percent so 3% of coaches own him, so very low. He's obviously a, a value pod. Value pod in our back line. Saints, yeah, so question marks there on how they want to play. How do they play under Rossi? Uh, what's the back six look like? Where does he fit in? The side. Does he come off the bench? That's a question. So having said all that, a lot to weigh up, but my gut feel is, I mean, he's, he's a great player. Gut feel, uh, we shouldn't start with him purely because we're not sure how he looks, uh, how's his health. We got it. I want to see him in the preseason games. Um, so yeah, I think we stay away from this pick for now, uh, but definitely one that we can use as a stepping stone in the first six or so rounds at his price. There's a lot of value there. If he's going well, we can jump on and not, not miss out on on the big value of, of a 30-point-plus season. So one to keep an eye on. It's a risky if you want to start with him. You know, he's cheap, so I don't mind it. But I'll, I would avoid for now and look at look at picking him up in the first uh, six or so weeks. So what do you think? Are you going to be starting with Hunter Clark? Let us know and let us know what you want to see next. Like, like and comment and subscribe. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers.